the main thing about where we lived then was we lived opposite the zoo. So every night I would go to sleep with this terrified sometimes with the trumpeting of the elephants, the roaring of the lions, and all the noises of the night. And there was no, no closed windows or doors. Everything was open. But I remember the festivals and how the synagogue was full of people and laughing and dancing. And they had water festivals. I think it was uh, Simhat Torah, where they, they, they had, everyone had little water pistols and hoses, and they trenched each other. And, you know, so we thought it was very funny. only 14 and my parents said it's out of the question you know education is everything and Habonim also said you're too young so you know come back next year well they didn't realize but I did come back next year and I was just as fervent as I had been so they said oh well you know let her go so I, everybody else in, on the farm was about 20 something and I came at 15, just before my 60th birthday. We were training in an agricultural way to go to Israel and do the land as it should have been, you know, not, not just talk about it, but actually work the land. So it was training to be tough and rough and all the things and deal with animals and cows and I, I dealt with the chickens. And of course, in those days, you couldn't get a passport till you were 21. So I had told my parents that we were going to study art in Paris. So they signed for me to have a passport. I felt really bad at the time that I was lying. But uh, this operation had to be terribly secret. We were picked because we were strong, healthy, uh, good, uh, I suppose, good... Um, um, good role models for the people on the for the people who would be going on the boat who were DPs came out of camps with very low morale sick and the, the boat that was supposed to take them was a special boat because it was going to take 5,000 people the biggest boat that went it was supposedly strong and fitted out and pregnant women were going and young children and orphans from the camps. We were training every night. We'd be woken up by the siren, and we'd put our packs on and run downstairs and form into groups, ready to go. So every night, we didn't know if that was the night we were going to go or not. And this went on for two or three weeks. And then one night, it was the night, and... Um, I still get very uh, overcome when I think about it. We were on the boat, and um, I was used to ocean liners, and this was a little boat, <laughs> you know, a very little boat, and lots of people in the ocean liners. You had a handful of people, really, per water. So it was um, a kind of shock that we were all going on it, but so, so long awaited that let's get on, and, you know, get on with it. In the morning, when it was light, we looked, we were right down below, but we were allowed to go upstairs on the deck. So we took turns, you know, with other people. When we looked out, there were five, um, I don't know what you call them, cruisers, five British warships following. Eventually, it came to seven. So they were just following. We were going along, and they were either side. The night before, up went the Exodus, 1947, 
and uh, you know, we were sort of singing and happy and dancing even on the top, because we are on the top deck, and really sort of absolutely thrilled. So the full five days they were with us, and on the night before we were supposed to make our dash, the, um, the boats in English were making declarations, you know, turn back, go make for, turn your boat, turn your boat. And the Haganah start realized they'd have to go earlier. It was, it was outside the three mile limit. And there's no chance, but they, they made a dash for it. And uh, the boats, as we started to go, the, the boats came, if this is that, the boats came in, banged it, went up. The next lot came in, so they came in waves, banging the boat. Luckily, it, it, broke, the bo it broke the sides, but it was still wicketing along. And then they boarded, and they killed the man at the wheel. They were all American volunteers, the, start, the crew. Anyway, they killed a few people. They killed two or three children. We were on the top deck. All we had, we had no ammunition. We had just tins of food. And we were sort of throwing it at the boarding party. But it didn't make much difference. And then they used gas. And when they used gas, we were done. You know, it was a horrible, horrible feeling. So we were just knocked out or lying about. And they took over the boat, and it drifted into Haifa. As soon as it reached Haifa, we were taken off, deloused, and put on a British prison ship. So that was <laughs> the, the end of that. put up tents and stayed like that for quite a while, you know, started to um, clear the stones off the fields because it was all thick stone. So we worked very hard sort of clearing the fields and trying to make space. And of course there were only ten women, strong ones. I was, I was lucky I was strong, young and strong. I was very happy. I didn't mind the hard work and so on. But I was very, I was by this time getting disenchanted. I was happy that I was there. But everybody in, in the kibbutz was talking English. And it was just as if I was in the kibbutz in Kent. I was 18, I was eligible, and I was just where I wanted to be. I was with young Israelis speaking Hebrew, stationed at Sauerfand. And uh, I was like not drinking cups of tea. And because I had this art training, they, I worked with maps. And also I, I kind of designed fl uh, flashes because all the soldiers, the, the army was being made into an army, you know, different, different um, flashes for different units. I don't know if they still use it. They couldn't say how long he'd lived. So I asked, I asked for leave of absence. And actually, I got uh, demobbed. I got my demob card. I got my passport back, which had been doctored. And um, they, you know, they paid my fare. And I came home via Switzerland. It's like it never happened. I mean, the Exodus experience, it's as if it never happened. You know, it's sort of people seeing the house, elderly housewife can have no idea of, of um, the impact. I can honestly say I didn't have a moment's fear. Not, not even now I think of it. You know, just the thrill of the being there. It was something that was worth doing. <laughs>